excited this afternoon because we're actually in a spot I haven't fished in probably 11 years or 10 years. No Kenyan, north of Richards Bay. Not an easy place to get to anymore. So you really have to get out of your way to get here. But this used to be one of the top fishing areas on the Zululand coast. Now we're fishing reefs here. So we're looking for some nice edible fish, rock cod, speckled snappers, cave bass. There's also good cop that sometimes come out here certain times of the year, as well as kingies that come through in the summer months. Add can marine, make sure that we've got uh, the freshest bait to use. I'm fishing Siglon fluorocarbon on my hook, hook link. He's fishing a four big gun. Mustard. I prefer using a grapnel sinker, which is quite weird fishing reefs. But I believe when I get stuck and I pull hard enough, it will release. I don't squeeze them too tight. So it gives me a second chance to get that fish out should it, should it get stuck. Okay, today we're at Yoganyana Beach, uh, just north of Richards Bay. What I've done is I've, I've made a little uh, chaka and leda bait. Uh, the rock art absolutely love it. With a, with a little bit of movement, some chaka tentacles. Got a 3 uh, mustard bait holder hook on, on a fixed trace. And uh, yeah, I've got very light sinker line on, so if the fish does take me into the reef, hopefully I'll lose the sinker uh, and get the fish out. I want to make a bit more bulky bait, so I'm putting a bit more langoustine and I've beaten a piece of chocker onto a normal chocker body just to get a bit more flavor and a bigger, more appetizing bait. At first pass, always with full confidence and anticipation, yet you're always wondering if you put it in the right spot. Especially with the wind blowing so hard, the accuracy is slightly off. Nyogenyan, it's about uh, 40 k's uh, north of Riches Bay. Uh, I'm going to fish for edibles, mainly in the, in the bricks. Uh, the sea conditions look superb at the back. I hope we're going to get a couple of good fish. So I'm going to put a bait and let's go see what we can get. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm putting a small chocker just for the base and on top of that I'm going to put a piece of um, fresh red eye so it looks like at this point in time then I'm going to just take a nice piece of prawn and I'm going to put a piece of prawn on top of it at the back. Small little bait, very effective, we'll definitely get a fish with that. Just let out the head, just 
used one circle hook, put a yellow tail head on, just want to see what they can get. But the sea is big, it's a big wash, the wave there are probably like uh, three meters high. Okay, I'm just going to give it a minute to settle the sinker because it's a very strong wash, like I mentioned. It's a strong sea and uh, it's good because you're sliding, the chocker doesn't move as fast as a solid frozen mackerel or a, a small yellow tail or a shad. It's a, it takes a bit longer to get out there. And with these big dumpers right here, you want your sinker to, sinker to sit properly before you slide. The sun's almost going to go down. My weight should reach my sinker when the sun is down, and I should go on before it's pitched off. Watch this. I just got a lot of slack, so I tightened up a bit, and it started moving. I had a pickup. Oh, I didn't realize now it's hooked. centimeters what I've done is I've basically put a Ori tag in it um, basically uh, Ori stands for Oceanographic Research Institute they basically have a tagging program that's currently running it's been running for, uh, for years and years and uh, yeah basically what happens is we tag the fish hopefully it gets recaptured by some other angler and yeah we can get some information about the fish for example uh, how long it's been released uh, swimming free and uh, obviously how much it's grew since the last time it's been caught. Uh, body and I'm into a good fish. I'm 100% convinced that this is a, a black one the way it took off. So yeah, let's see what happens. I've gone into the bridle already. I told you, it's gonna be nice, nice. Oh. You put it in a rock, yeah. You're a story boy. That's why you hooked a guppy. Yeah. Bye. I just want to get Andre in in ya. No, that's Jimmy Hill. Oh, Jimmy Hill, sorry. Okay, Andre is not rich. I'm using my trustworthy Daiwa Saltiga 50 Hyper. I'm into a very good fish, a really a good fish. I don't think it's going to stop, but we'll give it our best. It went out about 500 meters, I would reckon about 600. The problem is there's so many anglers here fishing with us tonight. It's about 20 rods in the water here. You need to be so careful for all the lines. It's tight. I'm 40 minutes into the fight now. I've gained my top shot back. 
Hopefully it stays the same and just keeps on coming. I must admit, I've really put a lot of pressure on this fish. I've pulled it full drag. I didn't release the drag. That's the way I normally fight my fish. Let it have a good burst and then I tighten the drag and then I, I just pull. It seems to work for me. sharks and milkies around so I need to come up with a bait that they can't get off that quick also I want a lot of blood in the water which attracts them quicker but should attract a bigger fish quicker and why I particularly like a slide in a, in a milk in a discolored water like this is it covers area as you slide it down to your sinker it releases the smell and the blood all the way to the sinker so it, it forms a trail for you where when you're casting it also does that but in a much smaller environment what I want to show you today is a double head mackerel I used to use back in the day. Take two mackerel and you split the one open complete. I always prefer working with frozen bait. It allows me to shape it a bit better. Where if it's defrosted, it becomes very mushy. A double head like that, and then you tie it together. I might even put some choco over this, just for the pickers. Now this area is very popular in the summer for all your non-edible fish. Uh, three days northeast, I think we've said it plenty times, but for you, you that don't know, this whole north coast area works very well for skates, rays and sharks after three days of northeast, which we had two days ago. And then yesterday it went southwest and then turned southeast, which blew until about two hours ago. The northeaster is now puffing not very hard, so it's still in the beginning, but I think that westerly, even though it cleaned up the water so quick, I don't think it took the temperature up as much. So it's still a good chance there's dirty water in front of us here. Those fish love hunting in dirty water as they can actually sneak up on their food and their prey. Another good op option with the pickers is just putting a shad head out. This will provoke a, a bite much quicker though because of uh, the smell and being able to defrost quicker than the head. You want to let it defrost a bit on your box and make sure none of these eagles actually grab them or the kites that's normally on the beach here. It's a lovely part of Mutanzini is all the fish eagles and the bird life you see here. It's really, really that just enhances everything, the whole experience here, the whole fishing experience. You see this choco has gone off, it's gone pink. But for the purpose, I want to use it, it's still perfect. Where I just use it to cover up and go over my bait to prevent the pickers from eating it too quick. And this will fit in nicely all the way to the top, set my hook. All right, so whole piece will stick out in the bottom which is perfect, it's the head, it's hard, but a smaller fish will battle a bit more. This will also, because it's nice and tight now, this will also assist in uh, sliding, it makes it a bit more streamlined. Not that we're gonna battle too much. Then on my trace, I've got 200 pound carbon coated steel fish mate. I've got a Kingfisher non-return weighted, and I've got two hoodlum mustard hooks. 
11 hours, Yamashita skirt, which uh, really in, in dirty and clean water makes a difference. We've seen that. And the most important when sliding is to keep your hooks proud. Especially with flatfish, they'll push these hooks flat as they take it and it misses them. So we use a toothpick, in this case two, because the hook's got a big, big hole. Just cut it off, leave enough for it. And there we go. Hook's proud, all ready to hook. Now, as you can see behind me, this is typically when they talk about Ntenzini banks. This is what they're referring to. On a low tide, there's normally a little gutter here or what you see behind me. You can walk all the way back to the lip and get into that deeper water in the back. Once the tide pushed too far, you can't get there anymore. Then you'll go look for holes that's closer to the side, like you'll see on my left and on your right, there's a gutter. That will form a hole once the tide's in and a good place to fish. Now those holes can produce all kinds of fish and uh, edibles as well. However, they do in the back in that deeper water, they do catch cob and several other edibles. The main or the popularity of this area is purely for the flatfish and the sharks. The guys come and hundreds of competitions, competitive anglers come to every year to get some weight on the board and catch a lot of fish. stroke should be to get it to move and you'll slowly feel the slack line coming back. I've just noticed how quickly it changed that rip, there's hardly much rip left there but we're hoping there's still a, a some brown shady there I'm still gonna try. You'll see I'm using a nice heavy seven ounce uh, Tone sinker because I wanted to move around in that drip. I wanted to wash into little gutters where fish will line, wait for food to wash in. Um, using a slightly bigger one so it doesn't move too fast though. Then the Salters VG40. Nice part about these reels 6.4 to 1 gear ratio, which makes it a nice fast retrieving reel. And I've decided an HMG medium. Very balanced, very nice balance. Fishing for fish up to Sure, 70, 80, 90 kilos, and uh, also nice and sensitive enough to fish for, for fish from two to five kilos and up. What is it doing? Yo, that's weird. Okay, it's not a very big fish. I'm fishing point four three. I don't want to pull it too hard. You want to see what it does? We'll take it from there. Well, brown scale. Look at how he sucks into the sand there, so I shouldn't move it. Goes a little bit, then he sucks onto the sand. But the line that's stuck here is claspers in the back. That's why we take it. There we go. My brown, there's the spike on the tail. Watch yourself with it. Good size, my old brown. It's a two back on here. We'll get him back in the water. Something not a bad size. We were hoping for something big, bigger, maybe one of those diamonds. I put the macro bait on to just put it over as the tide pushes, the diamonds will move up and a bit closer to this lip to see what washes off. Macro head. Seems 
that are maybe getting a pull. Just getting a, getting a lot of slack line at the moment. Okay, I've got a Daiwa uh, Soldier's 40. I've got 0.45 Kingfisher line. I've got a, the, the rod that I'm using is a, is a Poseidon Heavy. Uh, yeah, and I threw a, threw a mackerel head out over the lip. Got quite a bit of weed on my line. Just trying to figure out which direction this fish is going. Sitting on, sitting on the lip there. We've got another rod out, so I'm not sure if it's tangled on another line. Also want to try and get closer to the bank, so I can just pull it over the bank. I don't want my main line to rub onto the, onto the bank. I could possibly get cut off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get closer to the fish on the bank. I'm going to try and pull it over, and then I'm going to come back up with the fish. Let's see if it works. Could be a flatty. A diamond skate or a sandy or honeycomb, even a brown red. Let's see. Okay, so I got a glimpse of the fish. Looks like it's a butterfly ray. Uh, I saw it flap its wing on top of the water just on the lip. So, yeah, let's see if we can get him out. Yes, there we go. Summer in Zulu and wonderful. Thanks. 